God bless you everyone. Welcome to the Friday night meeting of the Holy Scriptures in Israel. We are studying the Bible together with the Lord's help. We are uh, continuously studying uh, one book and one chapter and one verse at a time. And the Lord has been very gracious to us as we are just about to end soon in the will of the Lord, the book of Daniel uh, tonight in we are going to look at Daniel chapter uh, 11, verse 35 to the end, 36 to the end. So once again, we say shalom and welcome everyone. Let's pray and ask the Lord to bless our meeting for this evening. <clears throat> and so Abba, our Father, we just ask your blessing upon your word. Thank you for the many lessons that we learned from the uh, book of Daniel concerning the times of the Gentiles. And your people Israel, in the midst of these days, we just ask that you will bless your word, teach us and help us to learn and to grow in the grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. We ask it in his precious name. Amen. Amen. So will you please turn with me to Daniel chapter 11. The passage that I'm reading is actually found from verse 36. We have already had, this is actually the third session. Can you imagine, beloved brothers and sisters, this is the third session in the 11th chapter of the book of Daniel. And we are dealing now with this final portion that really the, the, the main portion here is really the, the end of the times of the Gentiles and really dealing with the end of the final vision that Daniel received from this man, this angel that came to him, appeared to him in the beginning of chapter 10. And so I'm reading in verse 36. There we read, And the king shall do according to his will, and he shall exalt himself, and magnify himself above every god, and shall speak marvelous, in Hebrew, niflaot, marvelous things against the god of gods, and shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished, for that that is determined shall be done. Neither shall he regard the gods of his father, nor the desire of women, nor regard any god, for he shall magnify himself above all. But in his estate shall he honor the god of forces, and a god whom his father knew not shall he honor with gold and silver and precious stones and pleasant things. Thus shall he do in the most stronghold with a strange God, with small g, whom he shall acknowledge and increase with glory. And he shall cause them to rule over many and shall divide the land for gain. And at that time of the end shall the king of the south push at him, and a king of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind, with chariots and with horsemen, and with, uh, with many ships, and he shall enter into the countries and shall overflow and pass over. And he shall enter into the glorious land. This is the land of Israel. And many countries shall be overthrown, but these shall escape out of his hand, even Edom and Moab and the chief of the children of Ammon. He shall stretch forth his hand also upon the countries and the land of Egypt shall not escape. And he shall have power over the treasures of gold and of silver and over all the uh, precious things of Egypt and the Libyans and the Ethiopians shall be at his steps. 
but tidings shall come of the east and out of the north shall trouble him. Therefore he shall go forth with great fury and destroy and utterly, uh, to utterly and utterly de de destroy, or I should say utterly to make uh, away many. And he shall plant the tabernacles of his palace between the east in the glorious holy mountain, and he shall come to his end, and none shall help him. You notice the last verse uh, that ultimately this person of whom we are reading today, he will ultimately come to his end, and none shall help him. And so I will stop here, beloved brothers and sisters, in verse uh, um, uh, 45. So we will have this portion uh, before us for today. I just would like to remind us all that this is, of course, is really the third uh, study of the, of the 11th chapter of the book of Daniel. But it is always important to remember that Daniel chapter 10 and Daniel chapter 11, including Daniel chapter 10, all these three final chapters are chapters that are dealing with the final prophetic message that Daniel received from God through this man who appeared uh, to him. If you remember at the beginning of chapter 10, we have already learned, beloved brothers and sisters, that Daniel saw that sight of this man. If you remember in Daniel chapter 10, and that man that appeared to him, he appeared to him when Dan Daniel was by the river, the great river of Hidekel, Daniel chapter 10 and verse 4. And that certain man in verse 5 had a unique appearance and we mentioned that this man is an angel that appeared as a man to give Daniel the final information concerning the latter days. We've learned that all chapter 10 is the explanation of this man to Daniel what happened to him because he delayed to come to give Daniel the a answer for Daniel's prayer because there was a battle in the heavenly realms between this angel as well as the, the prince, the king of Persia, there's another angel, there is a battle. And we have already learned that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and dark, dark in the dark uh, places in the heavenly realm. And we have learned, beloved brothers and sisters, that there are wars that are existing uh, in the unseen world. And this... Uh, Angel needed the help of Michael. Michael was an angel that was assigned for the people of Israel. And he finally have arrived and he gave to Daniel this information concerning the time of the end. In chapter 10 and verse 14, he said to him, Now I am come to make thee understand what shall befall thy people in their latter days, for yet the vision is for many days. Now, to remind you, beloved brothers and sisters, that um, when Daniel received that vision from this angel, it was about 536 BC. In other words, if we would look at it from our vantage point of time, there were over 2,500 years have passed by, and yet the time is still not the time of the end. We're living during the church age. The church age is included in the times of the Gentiles. In Hebrew, we call it Eitot HaGoyim, which the Lord Yeshua, the Messiah, pointed to the disciples in Luke 21, verse 24. That the time of the Gentiles, the beginning of the time of the Gentiles, began when the Babylonian took captive our Jewish people at uh, uh, 586 BC, destroyed the temple in Jerusalem, and the time of the Gentiles continue on until the final days at the end of the tribulation, where the Lord Jesus, the Messiah, will return and he restore the people of Israel and establish the Messianic kingdom for a thousand years. 
So imagine how many, how many years have passed by and we are still not at the times of the end. And that's why this angel who appeared as man is explaining to Daniel that he says, these things will befall your people, namely the people of Israel, and it will be in the latter days, and for yet the vision is for many days. And so the time passes by, and you, we and I have already covered Daniel chapter 11, if you remember chapter 11, and we have really dealt in chapter 11 with three major points. In chapter 11, we have spoken about already verses 1 to 20, we see that he gives him information concerning the early days from Daniel's point of time, about the Persian, about the Grecian, and the, the, the North and the South conflict between the King of the South and the King of the North, and the King of the North and the King of the South from, in, in Daniel chapter 11, does not speak about Russia, does not speak about far north as we have in, in Ezekiel chapter uh, uh, 38 and 39, but it's specifically in relation to the north and the south from Israel, immediately next to Israel, meaning Syria and Egypt, Syria and Egypt, Syria and Egypt. And there were many kings that rose in the history of Israel. And so the first 20 verses of chapter 11 deal with the conflict between the king of the north and the king of the south. Grecian rulers that rose kings out of the Grecian empire that rule over the Grecian empire that was divided into four. And uh, the king of the north and the king of the south are constantly mentioned here in Daniel 11 verses a 1 to 20. And you remember that we saw how the, 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 uh, the Grecian Empire was divided into these four uh, sections by uh, the, the generals that um, took over from Alexander the Great, uh, uh, Lysimachus, and, uh, and Cassander, and Seleucus, and Ptolemy. And they, these uh, these uh, generals took over and the north and the south is specifically mentioned here in our chapter, the 11th chapter of the book of Daniel. By the time we arrive to Daniel chapter 11 and verse uh, uh, 21 onward to verse 35, which we covered last week, we see that there was specifically one single man that was emphasized, and this man was is known as uh, uh, um, um, uh, Antiochus, and also Antiochus was the one that became the king of the north, a descendant from Alexander the Great, and all the kings that came that rule over Syria, the king of the north, and the this one by the name of uh, Antiochus is the one that we have spoken about, and he was the one in chapter 11, verses 21 to 35, we learn about Antiochus who became a type and a picture of the Antichrist of whom we are just about to speak right now in Daniel 11 from verse 36 to the end. So if you remember, we have already dealt with uh, Daniel 11, verse 21 to 35, which was the second message on Daniel chapter 11. And there we saw the prophecy concerning this person by the name of Antiochus uh, uh, the fourth. He is the one who became a type of the Antichrist. And he is the one that have desecrated the temple, uh, which was rededicated by the Hashmonaim, by the Jewish people who somehow successfully were able to push the Grecian Syrian army and to establish the feast that is called Hanukkah, the feast of dedication, of which we as Jewish people celebrate every year uh, uh, during the winter, the, the, the winter season. And that's what we have already covered, beloved brothers and sisters, in Daniel chapter 11, verses 21 to 35. Today, as we are speaking now, uh, we are moving now from Daniel 11, verses uh, uh, um, 21 to 35, to Daniel 11, verse 36, to verse 45, the last portion of Daniel 11. Now, these verses, beloved brothers and sisters, now deal specifically 
in uh, about the latter days, during the days of the tribulation period, when the Antichrist, the counterfeit Messiah, the Mashiach Sheker, that we say, that we know that will rise up in a future day. And I want you to notice in verse uh, 35, which we concluded with in our previous Bible class together, verse 35 takes us, moves us from uh, Antiochus Epiphanes, that have all in his history was the one that the wicked men that have risen and, and, and caused a lot of persecution to the people of Israel. And it moving now to a, a greater persecutor of the Jews who will rise up in a future day, which we know him as the Antichrist. Notice at the end of verse 35, it says, I'll read the whole verse, verse 35, and some of some of them of uh, understanding shall fall, and notice it says to try them and to purge and to make them white. In other words, this persecution of the Jews, of our own Jewish people, will ultimately will pur purify the Jewish people, will make them white. In other words, they will purge them from their disobedience, and, ultim and, and ultimately will be a restored nation. And it says, notice, even to the time of the end, verse 35, because it is yet for a time appointed. God have appointed a time which is going beyond Antiochus Epiphanes, beyond the days of the Grecian Empire, to the Roman Empire, which is the final empire that will rise uh, uh, will rise and be revived and will have this wicked man that is called here in Daniel 11, verse, 30, verse 30, uh, 36, the willful king. So now, beloved brothers and sisters, just that we, I, I had to lead you here. So in verses 36 to verse 45, we have two major points that I would like to emphasize in our Bible class this evening. Number one, we have here Daniel receive information about the future willful king, which is the Antichrist, the rise of the willful king, verses 36 to 39. The rise of the Antichrist, who is called here the willful king, in the time of the end. This is verses 36 to 39. Secondly, we have in verses 40, to 45, we have the events that will take place during the rule of the willful king, who is really the Antichrist, the counterfeit Messiah. Now, notice this. I just will begin by this. Notice, and the king, notice verse 36, this is the future willful king that now will rise in a future day, and we will find out what he will do here in the next verses. But I don't want to forget to remind you that we mentioned that the Word of God gives various names to the Antichrist that will rise in the future day. If you remember, we have already have pointed out many times to some of the names that the, the Antichrist uh, is um, is called by the word of God. In Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15, he is called the seed of Satan. In Isaiah 14, 4, he is called the king of Babylon. In Zechariah chapter 11, he is called the idle shepherd. In Daniel 7 and verse 8, he is called the little horn. In Daniel 8 and verse 23, he is called the king of fierce countenance. In Daniel 9 and verse 26, he is called the prince that shall come. In Daniel 9 and verse 27, he is called the desolator. In Daniel 11, that's where we are now, verse 27, and, and, and we are also in verse 36, he is called the desolator in verse 27. And in this verse, Daniel 11 and verse 36, he is called the willful king, a king that does according to his will. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 3, he is called the man of sin. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 3, he is also called the son of perdition. In Hebrew, Ben Ha'avadon. 
In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 8, he's called the lawless one. In Hebrew, it's called harasha, the evil one, the lawless one. And in 1 John chapter 2, verse 22, he's called the Antichrist, Soten HaMashiach. And in Revelation 11, 13, and 19, he's called the beast, Chaya, the beast. So he's called with many names, the seed of Satan, the king of Babylon, the idle shepherd, the little horn, the king of fierce countenance, the prince that shall come, the desolator, the willful king, the man of sin, the son of perdition, the lawless one, the Antichrist against the Messiah and the counterfeit, like the Mashiach. And then finally, he's called the beast, Hachaya, in Revelation 11, 13, and 19. And so now let's go back to our uh, uh, chapter, beloved brothers and sisters. And you notice in verses 36, we have three things that we learn about this willful king. Number one, we see that the future willful king, he will exalt himself and magnify himself above every god. Notice that. I'm reading in verse 36. And the king shall do according to his will. That's why he's called the willful king. And he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god. And shall speak marvelous things against the God of God, and shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished, for that that is determined shall be done. You notice the first thing that we read about him? That he will exalt himself and magnify himself above every God. This is, if you please turn with me to Second Thessalonians chapter 2, and we learn from 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verses 3 and 4 about the Antichrist. This is exactly what Shaul Paul says to the Thessalonian in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And listen to what we read concerning this uh, wicked man, the willful king. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verses 3 and 4. Notice that, and I'm reading verse 3. It says, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there be falling away. This is apostasia, a departure from the things of the Lord in the present day of the church age. And then he said that the man of sin, Isha Chata'a, the man of sin will be revealed. And again, the son of perdition, Notice in verse 4, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God, so that he as God, listen to this, sit in the temple of God. That means that the temple has to be rebuilt. This is tribulation temple. He's showing himself that he is God. You can read that as well in Revelation chapter 13, verses 1 to 8, that he is magnifying himself and exalting himself, claiming that he is God. This is exactly what the counterfeit Messiah will do. He want to take the place of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah, who is truly God the Son, who came from the Abba, from the Father, to this world to accomplish the work of redemption. And the counterfeit Mashiach, the Antichrist, anti is not only against, but anti also means instead of. He will want to take the place of the Messiah. Christ comes from the Greek word Christos, which is taken from our Hebrew word Mashiach, anointed one. So he is anti, he is like, he appearing like the Messiah. And he will stand in a temple of the tribulation period, will exalt himself, making, claiming himself to be God. This is verse 36. In other words, not only that the future willful king will exalt himself and above everything, everyone that is every God, but also the willful king will speak marvelous things against the God of God. And the word for marvelous it's really in a negative way. It's not that he will speak some great things. Uh, notice it says here in verse 36, he will speak marvelous things against, not for, 
but against God, the, the God of God. And the word in Hebrew, marvelous, is niflaot. And niflaot can be wonderful in a sense and a positive, but here is not a positive. He is speaking against God, as we have already read in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verses 3 and 4. The third thing that we read about him in verse 36 is that this future, this is from our vantage point of time, is after the church will be raptured, and then later on when the tribulation days will begin, the, the true assembly, not the false assembly, but the true assembly, the true church will be taken to glory. The false church will remain here for the tribulation period which will be judged. Israel as a nation will be also judged by God and refined and ultimately restored and and, and accept the Messiah for the coming Messianic kingdom. But beloved brothers and sisters, what we read here, that this future willful king will be allowed to prosper for a while. Notice that at the end of verse 36, it says, not only that he will speak, marvelous things against God, the God of God, but he shall prosper. What does that mean he shall prosper until the indignation be accomplished? Notice the word indignation comes from the Hebrew word zam. Zam is really the wrath of God that will fall upon the face of this earth during the tribulation period. God, who is a righteous and a holy God, He is just. Yes, He loved the world. Yes, He loved the assembly. Yes, He loved Israel. Yes, He loved you and I, but He's also a holy God and a righteous God. And when He judges, He disciplines He disciplined this world. He will judge this world in righteousness. And therefore, beloved brothers and sisters, he first of all sent the Mashiach, the the Messiah, who died for our sin and was buried and rose again for our justification. But those who rejected him, And those who reject God in the past or rejecting God in the present or will reject God in the future, they will experience the Zam, The Zam in Hebrew simply is coming from, mean the word, the indignation. Until the indignation, not only indignation, but the indignation. That has a reference to the seven year of the tribulation period. Until the end of the tribulation, when the indignation will be accomplished. For that, that is determined, shall be done. Now notice, beloved brothers and sisters, What God has determined to happen, will happen. Everything that God has declared in His Word will surely come to pass. Nothing will escape Him. No one will escape God. God will judge this world in righteousness. And if someone refuses Yeshua, the Messiah, today, They will have to stand before God at the great white throne judgment before the Lord Jesus, and they will ultimately be cast into the lake of fire. But the believers who have accepted Yeshua, Jesus, the Messiah, we are forgiven because of what the Messiah has done for us, what the Lord Jesus, the Messiah, has done for us. And you notice that. I want you to turn for a moment to the prophet Zechariah, And Zechariah sadly tells us, give us a description of what will happen, uh, how this man will prosper, this willful king will prosper, because we read in Zechariah um, um, uh, chapter um, um, 13 and verse 8. Notice that. That's why it says that a willful king shall prosper. Look what will happen. In fact, beloved brothers and sisters, you know, and again, remember that it is always in connection more specifically with Israel, the nation. Of course, the world will experience this tribulation, terrible tribulation as well, but it is in connection with Daniel's people, Daniel's city, Jerusalem. 
And you notice what we read in Zechariah chapter 13 and verse 8, And it shall come to pass that in all the land, says the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die. But the third shall be left therein, and I will bring the third part through the fire. And I will refine them as silver is refined, and I will try them as gold is tried. And they shall call on my name, and I will hear them. And I will say, It is my people. And they shall say, Jehovah is my God. It is in reference to the Jewish people, to our people of Israel at the tribulation, at the end of the tribulation. Remember, when Zechariah wrote the word of the Lord, there was no church in existence. When Daniel wrote the word of the Lord, the the church did not exist. It's always in reference to the people of Israel and the times of the Gentiles and how the Gentile empires will treat God's chosen people on earth during the whole history. And we learn here that this willful king will prosper. He will be successful in causing one of the greatest holocaust of the Jewish people that ever have happened in Jewish history. And that is sad because God has determined, notice what it says here, and it will be accomplished, that is determined, shall be done. It was already decreed by the God of Israel that he will bring about our own people Israel through Jacob's trouble and he will bring the Jewish people out. He will refine his own earthly people Israel and ultimately bring them into the blessed messianic kingdom when all Israel shall be saved, those that will remain at the end of the tribulation a period. You remember that the Apostle Paul reminded the Roman believers in the book of Romans. He says, I don't want you to be ignorant of this mystery that blindness in part happened to Israel until, until the fullness of the Gentiles become in, until the end of the church age, and then all Israel shall be saved as it is written. That a deliverer will come out of Zion and he will turn the nation of Israel turn on godliness from Jacob. And that's why we read in Zechariah chapter 13 and verse 8 and 9 that God will call them, you are my people. And Israel will say, Jehovah, the Lord is my. This is a national regeneration. But we are not talking about the regeneration as yet. Because we learn here about the rise, the future rise of the willful king, the Antichrist, the counterfeit Messiah in verse 36. Three points we have there. The future willful king will exalt and magnify himself. The future willful king will speak uh, marvelous things against the God of God. And the future willful king will be allowed to prosper until the end of the tribulation period, and ultimately he will be judged by God and will be cast into the lake of fire. Now we are moving along in verse 37, Daniel 11, 37. We have a few points here, and this verse sometimes makes people confused because I oftentimes hear, sadly, and I don't know why, that a willful king will be a Jewish man, that will be the one who will be the Antichrist. I don't agree with it. I don't see it with our passages that we have in the book of Daniel. In fact, the willful king, all the lists that we have presented, the Antichrist, the false messiah, the, 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 the one that we read about him throughout the whole scripture, this list that we have provided for you, have always a reference to the Roman ruler that will rise, will rise in a final day. You remember, we have already studied Daniel chapter 2, In Daniel chapter 7, and we have also studied Daniel chapter 9, and we have learned that the rise of the false Messiah will be for a Roman from the fourth and final empire that will rise in a future day. He will rise from among the Roman empire, the final Roman, Roman empire that will rule this world. He will be the the one that will rise up in a future day. So verse 37, oftentimes is being used to say that he must be Jewish 
But uh, if you read carefully the context, here you will find out that it's really not a, a, a Jewish person. It says here, neither shall he regard the gods of his father. Notice that it's very interesting. If uh, I read it and I heard that, that the only place that the word, the capital G is mentioned uh, on, in this verse is mostly the King James Version. All other versions, almost all of them in the English, use, put not capital G, but a small g. Gods of his fathers. Not God with capital. I think it is only the King James. It's interesting. Why? But the, the, the Hebrew uh, is definitely speaking in plural. In Daniel chapter 11, in verse 37, Ve'al Elohei avotav lo yavin. In other words, it doesn't speak about the God, the single God of Israel, but the gods, he will not, notice that he will not regard even the gods that his father, the pagan gods that his fathers, his forefathers uh, have followed. He will not regard them. Notice that we'll find out that Satan will be his God. He is one of these, a counterfeit, a, a, a triunity, Satan, the Antichrist and a false prophet of which of whom we read in Revelation chapter 12 and chapter 13. He will not regard the gods, plural, of his fathers, the pagan gods of his fathers. And here's a second reason that some believe that he will be Jewish because it says, no, the desire of women. In other words, some suggest that the Jewish women always wanted to give birth to the Messiah. But again, they made the, the Hebrew word is chemdat nashim, chemdat nashim, what the women desire, <clears throat> and it has no reference to the uh, the Jewish women desire to have the Messiah to give to him birth. Here it's in reference that he will not desire what women desired in days of old. There was the desire of women to uh, to um, uh, to worship uh, um, the uh, Tammuz and uh, and also the love of women. He will not desire. He will be a very hard man that he will not uh, regard the gods, small g, of his father. He will not regard the desire of women, of what women will love, nor will regard any gods. Again, small g. For he shall magnify himself above all. He will be the kind of a man that will not, you might say, go even what his his pagan idol fathers, forefathers believe in, he will not believe in, he will not regard, the, uh, he will not even regard any love from women, which is very natural. You remember in Genesis 3 and verse 15 and 16, we read that the Lord, when he punished Adam and Eve, he said that, the, that Eve will, unto your husband, your desire shall be, and that was a part of submissiveness that God had placed upon the woman already at the fall in Genesis 3, verse 15 and 16. <clears throat> and so this man, will, the willful king, he will not regard the gods, plural of his fathers, Elohei Avotav. And secondly, he will not, the, the future king will not regard the love of, of a women for him. He will be such a, a hard man. And you know, it is interesting because the word lachmod, chemdat nashim, as it says here in the English, the desire of women, it also comes from a verse in uh, uh, Exodus chapter 20. Uh, it speaks uh, the word thou shall not covet, lo tachmod, lo tachmod, the very same root word. And uh, in other words, he will not regard all that which women desire and covet for. And in connection with this is has to do with uh, 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 to take to usurp authority, perhaps, and so on. He will be the willful king 
who will do according to his will. The only one that he will regard will be Satan himself. And notice what we read here in the next verse, verse uh, uh, 38 and verse uh, 39. Here we learn a few things about this man as well. Verse 38, but his estate, he will honor the gods of forces. Notice that. And, and a god whom his fathers knew not shall he honor with gold and silver and with precious stones and with pleasant things. And beloved brothers and sisters, he will regard Satan because Satan will give him power and will position this wicked, willful king in a future day. Satan himself will give power to this uh, willful king, this Antichrist, during the tribulation uh, period. Now turn with me for a moment to Revelation chapter 13. I would like to read a few verses uh, from the first uh, portion of Revelation chapter 13. Listen to what we read about this wicked person that will rise, the first beast of Revelation chapter 13. Again, notice that the word antichrist could be applied to both beasts of Revelation chapter 13 because both of them are against the Messiah but one of them take the place of the Messiah by claiming to be God and desire to receive worship from men. Notice what we read in Revelation chapter 13. I'm reading from verse 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast. He rise up from the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns. And upon his head the name of blasphemy. And notice that. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard with his feet, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. Now notice that we learn from this verse that he is the one that rose up from the Roman Empire, the last empire according to Daniel 2, and Daniel chapter 7. But notice what happened here in verse 2b. And the dragon, this is Satan, gave him his power and his seat and a great authority. This beast of Revelation 13, verse, uh, verse 2, is the willful king of Daniel chapter 11, in verse 36, 37, 38, and so on. He received power from the dragon. The dragon is Satan himself. If you go back to chapter 12 of Revelation, and in verse, uh, verse um, um, 9, it says, And the great dragon was cast out, the old serpent, called the devil and Satan, which deceives the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. This is an event that will take place in the middle of the tribulation. Satan will be cast out of, the, of heaven. He will be here on earth and he will cause hell on earth. The tribulation will be so severe when Satan in the middle of the tribulation will be cast down to this earth. And this Satan, this dragon, gave power and he gave him a seat and he gave him a great authority to the beast, to the willful king. Notice verse, notice the word gave is mentioned so many times in Revelation chapter 13. And I saw one of his head as it were wounded unto death. And I'm reading down to verse 4. And they worship the dragon which gave power unto the beast. This is the willful king of Revelation chapter 11. Verse 5. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things of blasphemy. We have already read in verse 36 that he spoke against God. Blasphemous words against God. Verse 7. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints 
and to overcome them. And power was given him over the, the kinders and towns and nations. So this willful king received power from Satan. And he gave him to have the seat of power there, and he will claim to be God sitting in the temple in the city of Jerusalem, and in the middle of the tribulation period, he will begin his final campaign against the Jewish people. And that's where we read now in the next verses what will happen when he will receive that power and he will cause and inflict persecution upon our people, the Jewish people, during the tribulation days. And so we read in verse 39, notice it says in verse 39, and he shall do in the, in the most, uh, and, and shall he do in the most strongholds with a strange God, and he shall acknowledge and increase with glory. This is the willful king doing the tribulation specifically from the middle to the end of the tribulation. And notice again, notice verse 40, and at that time of the end, notice that beloved brothers and sisters now from verse 40 onward, here we find out what will happen during the um, a tribulation period. This is also important to bear in mind and i'm reading notice there will be a war verse 40 on to the towards the end notice it said and, and at the time of the end shall the king of the south push at him again remember that the king of the south in the context of daniel chapter 11 all along it was egypt the king of the south and the king of the north was always syria so remember that during the tribulation period, according to Daniel chapter 10, you remember the image with the 10 toes, that will be 10 kings that will rule over this world. According to Daniel chapter 7, this beast, he will destroy three and he will rule over the rest of the world. And so we find out here some of the wars that are going on during the tribulation period. And at the time of the end, verse 40, shall the king of the south will push at him, and the king of the north shall come against him, like a whirlwind, with chariot, and with horsemen, and with many ships. And he shall enter into the countries, and shall overflow and pass over. In other words, the Antichrist will be successful to destroy some of the nations that come against him. And he will be successful to defeat them. In fact, I would like you to go back for a moment to Daniel chapter 7. I just want to point to a verse or two there back in Daniel chapter 7. You remember in Daniel chapter 7, we read, we read uh, about this dreadful and terrible image of that wicked person. Notice that I'm reading verse 7. <clears throat> Daniel 7 verse 7. It says, after this I saw in a night vision and behold a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly. And it had a great iron teeth. It devoureth and break in pieces, and stamped the residue with the feet of it, and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. Again, remember when we studied together this uh, Daniel chapter 7, we uh, Daniel saw in a vision various beasts. He saw the, the uh, Babylonian empire. Then he saw, if you remember, the second beast like a bear. He saw the lion, the Babylonian, verse 4. He saw the, the bear, uh, the Middle Persian. He saw the leopard, the Grecian Empire. And then in verse 7 and 8, he saw the fourth empire, which is the Roman Empire. But now he sees it in his final stage during the tribulation period, because the Romans have already began their rule much earlier. 
They rule during the Lord Jesus the Messiah's life on earth. But it was divided, and now there will be a revived Roman Empire at the end during the tribulation, and this wicked king, the willful king, he will notice it, verse 8, it says, And I consider the horns, and behold, notice, there came up another little horn, before whom there were three of the first horn plucked up by the roots, and behold, in this horn there was eyes like the eyes of men, and mouths that speak as great things. So Daniel 7, verses 7 and 8, gives us a little bit of preview of what we read now in Daniel 11 concerning the final days of the Antichrist during the tribulation period. So let's go over quickly over these last verses here from verse 40 to verse 45. In verse 40 we read <clears throat> that the time of the end shall the king of the south will push against him. The king of the north will come also against him, Syria and uh, Egypt and Syria. And, uh, like a whirlwind with a chariot, but ultimately he will enter and he will overcome. He will overflow them and he shall pass over them. In verse 41, the willful king will take over even the land of Israel. Beloved brothers and sisters, listen to this. In verse 41, he will enter into the glorious land. This is the land of Israel. And many countries shall be overthrown, but there shall escape out of his hand even Edom and Moab and the chief of the children of Ammon. Notice these three names here. Edom, Moab, and Ammon. Notice these three nations. These three nations, Ammon, Moab, and Edom, are present-day Jordan. In other words, when Israel became a nation in 1948, Israel became a nation, but Israel was not yet a restored nation. Israel today is still in a state of unbelief. And Israel will have to come to its wit's end because there is still a future war that Israel as a nation will lose out because the Antichrist will cause havoc against our people, the people of Israel, during the tribulation days. That's why it is called Tsarat Yaakov, Jacob's trouble. And so you notice, <clears throat> very interesting, and I wish we had more time, but I just want to mention that, in verse uh, um, 43, that he, notice that, he will go over the, the he will enter into the, um, the glorious land, verse 41, and many countries will ultimately be overthrown. And uh, these only three nations will escape. Which three nations? Notice, Edom, Moab, and Ammon. And why these nations shall escape? Because these nations, Ammon, Moab, and Edom, are representing present-day Jordan today. And to these nations, the Lord Jesus, the Messiah, will allow the Jewish remnant to flee when they will see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet, standing in a holy place when they will see that the Antichrist will claim to be God in the temple, the tribulation temple in Jerusalem, the Jewish people will have to flee to Ammon, Moab, and Edom. Let me show you this, please. Turn with me to um, uh, Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. Again, beloved brothers and sisters, it is so important to understand that when the Lord Yeshua the Messiah spoke to the disciples, the church was not yet in existence. So he's speaking concerning Israel, concerning the Jewish people in the latter days. And so notice what we read in Daniel chapter 24 and verse 15. Yeshua is speaking to the disciples and he's saying to them, When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet. Now he's speaking to the disciples. 
These are Jewish disciples. In a sense, what he does, he's lifting them up and he's placing them during the tribulation period, right in the middle of the tribulation period. Now, of course, the disciples that he spoke with, they are already passed out of this scene. They are in glory. They are part of the church. They, as, they were the foundation of the assembly of the church. But their descendants, the Jewish people of the tribulation days, after the church will be raptured, they will be the one who will see the abomination which maketh desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet, notice, standing in a holy place. That means that there is a temple that must be built, the tribulation temple, and he will stand in the temple, notice that, he will claim to be God, as we read in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. And then he says, whosoever read, you Jewish people who will read it in the future day, you should understand. Then they will understand what they have to do. Notice verse 16. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Notice, not let them which be in America or in Canada or in Europe. No, in Judea. He's speaking to the Jewish people who will live in Judea. Jerusalem is the capital city of the people of Israel. And he's speaking to them, let them which are in Judea flee into the mountains. If you look at the map, the mountains is present day Jordan, Ammon, Moab, and Edom. Today is the, the country called Jordan. So when you look at the map, and the Jewish people of the tribulation period will read the book of Daniel, chapter 11 in our case, and they will realize that when he will stand in the temple of God claiming to be God, that will be a sign for them to flee. And so the Lord Yeshua the Messiah give, a, you might say, a pre-information for the future remnant people of Israel during the tribulation period. He says, listen, you flee into the mountains. Let he which is in the housetop, housetop don't come down and take anything out of the house. Let them be which are in the field return back and don't return back to take even your clothes. And notice he said to them, in, in verse 19, Woe unto them that are with a child. In other words, a pregnant woman to flee during these days will be a terrible day to flee to the mountains. And then in verse 20, he says, Pray that your flight will not be in winter. Very difficult to maneuver in winter days in the mountains, to, to, to run towards the mountain Petra, Boshra, uh, 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 in the, uh, from the from the prophet Isaiah and, and and Micah and notice neither pray that your flight will not be on a Shabbat day, beloved brothers and sisters. The Shabbat day was given to our people of Israel as a day of rest, and when they would want to rest on a Shabbat day, they are to pray that they will not see this event taking place on the Shabbat day because they will have to violate the Shabbat day by fleeing from this terrible counterfeit Messiah who is standing in the temple claiming to be God, committing the abomination which makes a desolation. And so, beloved brothers and sisters, I want you to notice that the mountains of Matthew chapter 24, verse 16 is Ammon, Moab, and Edom. Let me read you one more verse. Turn with me to Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12. There we read, beloved brothers and sisters, these words. Revelation chapter 12. And then just a couple of verses there in connection with our passage and and i really apologize that i was not successful to finish everything here but we'll go into chapter 3 uh, 12 next uh, next friday bible class notice in revelation chapter 12 again notice that what we read the mountains 
of Matthew chapter 24 is the wilderness of Revelation chapter 12. We read in verse 13 of Revelation 12, And when the dragon, this is Satan, in the middle of the tribulation, when he saw that he was cast to the earth, he will persecute the woman. Revelation 12, the woman is Israel, the woman which brought forth the, the, the man-child, who gave birth to the Messiah. The Messiah came through the nation of Israel, through the virgin Miriam. This is the woman of Revelation chapter 12 and verse 13. And to the woman, verse 14, to Israel, were given two wings, of, the, of a great eagle that she might flee or fly into the wilderness. The wilderness is Ammon, Moab, and Edom, present-day Jordan. The wilderness is the mountains of Matthew chapter 24. The wilderness is, beloved brothers and sisters, is these three nations of whom we find out Edom, Moab, and Ammon, which shall escape the hand of the Antichrist. Why? Because God will prepare a place. Notice I'm back to Revelation chapter 12, where it says concerning the woman there, she will flee, verse 14, into the wilderness, into her place. Notice that where she will be nourished for a time, times, and half a time from the face of the serpent. In other words, the Jewish people will be preserved by God for three and a half years of the second half of the tribulation period, protected by God, because God have a plan for Israel. God has a program for the Jewish people. And through the nation of Israel, blessing will flow to the world. And that's why, beloved brothers and sisters, the angel who appeared as man to Daniel, give him the program of God for the times of the Gentiles that will come to an end only at the second coming of the Mashiach. And where our people Israel in the future day will look upon him whom they have pierced, and they will accept finally the Lord Yeshua, Jesus the Messiah, as King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and he will ultimately will restore them and bring them back to himself. Well, beloved brothers and sisters, I must stop here for, with these verses, and in the will of the Lord, we will just touch these verses and enter into the final chapter of the book of Daniel in our next meeting together on our Friday night Bible class, the study of the book of Daniel. So, Abba, our Father, thank you for your goodness, for your plan, for your program, for Israel, for the church, and for the whole world. Thank you so much. And above all, we are thankful for the Lord Yeshua who loved us and gave himself for us. Bless your word, we pray in his precious name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> and so we say shalom, shalom to you that are with us today. God bless you. Those of you that are with us over Zoom, please remain for questions and answers. God bless you. Shalom, shalom, everyone. Bye-bye.